motherfucking tube. I got a banger that I'm cooking up right now. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, do all that shit. You feel me? Man, I was just on the road. And to be honest, I love having full conversations with myself. You can say I'm a weirdo if you want to, but that's why my charisma is so fire. That's why my eye contact is so fire. It's because I'm always converging with myself. You know what I'm saying? It really does help. Helps your speech, helps your mind, a whole bunch of different things. But anyways, today I want to talk to y'all about meekness, bro. Because I was thinking back to in recent times, in like 2019, end of 2019, beginning of 2020. So like the past year, year and a half, um, I was running track for my school, right? I was running track in college and <laughs> I remember there was this coach, right? Like the head coach, right? Head or assistant coach. I don't know what the fuck he was. All I know is he was fat and black as fuck <laughs> and a bitch at the end of the day. But that's besides the fact, um, you know, I was I was doing my thing, bro. I was like one of the fastest on the team. I was probably my most athletic I've ever been when I was 19 years old, to be completely honest. I was really hitting the gym hella hard. I got big as fuck, um, put on some serious muscle, this, this, and that. And, you know, things were good. You know what I'm saying? I was chilling. I was just working, working out, going to school. You know, same old, same old, right? doing everything but back then something that I didn't have is meekness that I do now and in the Bible what meekness is described as is basically just a man having his power under control so what does that mean simply put keeping your emotions in check keeping your strength in check physically and keeping your mental in check all of that because at the end of the day, bro, we're in a spiritual war. And we have been since we were born. And it's only becoming more and more apparent as this pandemic still continues. Right? But back on this topic with the story. So, I was running track practice this one day, right? And we were doing these 300 meter repeats. 300 meter acceleration repeats. And if you know about that shit, you know how fucking hard that shit is, right? So... I was in there grinding, you know what I'm saying, putting in my work, and I was supposed to go right after the girls, right? So they did the girls first, and then I was the first dude up after the girls, right? So then the first girl goes, then it's my turn, right? Bust that shit out, ran that shit hella fast, bro. I was killing the game. Ideal form and everything, bro. You know what I'm saying? Did my thing. All right, good job, Kaiser, right? Next rep comes, right? do all good right and then the third and final rep i run right right as the girl right as the last girl comes in i run didn't do anything wrong right as she came i ran right and then right after that coach says you know what did i tell you to run i said no but i just finished my rep oh okay well if you don't see a problem with that then you're off the team right so you can take your ass home he said that those exact same fucking words to me. I'm not going to get into the whole entire story, but basically that pissed me the fuck off. And I fucking punched the shit out of a window <laughs> at the school, cut up my fucking arm. And I almost got into a fight with him, bro. And manhandled that bitch ass nigga. But all that being said, bro, at the end of the day, what did that really cost me? That cost me my mental health because that made me go into a deep depression started you know what i'm saying fooling around with a bunch of stupid shit that i never should have fooled around with that made me question life that made me question myself and most of all that made me not even want to participate in the sport that i love at the end of the day bro if you cannot handle people trying to get you out of your element you're not a man bro and that's what i learned 
you have to be able to handle people trying to come against you. Adversity is always going to be there. There will always be bitch ass niggas, bro. You're never gonna get around that ever in life. There will always be fuck niggas, bro, who will purposely try to get into your way and purposely try to knock you off your fucking path. You have to stay in your fucking lane. That's it. You have to stay in your goddamn lane. Because no matter what the fuck happens, as long as you be professional, nobody can stop you. Nobody can say you're in the wrong if you're always in the right, period. And that's what I had to fucking learn. I was not in the right, bro. I was operating out of my pride, which is what a lot of men do. But guess what? Pride gets you fucking dead, bro. Pride gets you shot. Pride gets you fucking robbed. Pride gets you fucking bitches pregnant. Whatever the course, whatever the case may be, bro. Pride always goes before the fall, bro. Remember that shit. Pride always comes before the fall. Don't ever think you're too highly to, or you're too special, right? Because guess what? The moment you think that you're better than what you actually are, that's where you fuck up. That's where adversity hits. That's when you get knocked on your ass. Period. That's when you get your shit rocked. Period. And that's what I had to fucking learn. At the end of the day, bro, I have so many big plans in my life. I want to be somebody who's well-known, well-educated, and my name really out there. So at the end of the day, what the hell is going to come with that? Hella haters, hella people talking, hella bitches snaking. Like, bro, this shit, like, there's nothing new under the sun, bro. Like, that's what I had to realize. And that's what I'm trying to get y'all to realize too, bro. That's why I'm making this video. Like, bro, there's nothing new under the sun. Like... Whatever your idols are going through or the people that you look at and you say, oh man, I wish I had their position. Once you get to their position or once you're on your way to go into their position, you're going to face the same shit that they had to go through. That's why I never judge anybody for how they act or the decisions that they make. Because at the end of the day, if that person is in a higher social class than you, you can't, bro, you can't understand what they're going through. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you're not a celebrity, you don't know what it's like to be a celebrity, bro. If you have a large following, you don't know what it's like. Period. But at the end of the day, bro, just know that the hits are going to come. Just know that life is going to throw you curveballs. Just know that shit is going to happen. People are going to die. People are going to leave you. People are going to hate on you. People are going to snake on you. The closest people to you are really going to be the fakest people to you. It shit like that is going to happen, bro. Regardless, it doesn't matter how good you are, how good of a person. It doesn't matter um, how much good deeds you've done for God and how good of a Christian you are or how nice of a person, how good of a family man you are. Like none of that shit fucking matters. So how much good karma you have. That's bullshit, bro. Listen, bro. I'm, I'm going to tell you like this. If, if they crucify Jesus Christ... If they, if they crucified Jesus Christ and he had to go through a bunch of shit, what do you think is going to happen to you? You think you're exempt? You're not exempt from shit in this world, bro. There is no such thing as free passes, bro. This life is not fair. And I'm going to be the first one to tell y'all that. It is not fair, bro. Yeah, bro, he did kick me off the team for a bullshit-ass reason. But at the end of the day, you know what's funny? Is I went to the office, right? Because they had to break up the scuffle and everything, right? And when I went to the office, like one week later, later or a couple of days later, excuse me, the fucking vice president, the fucking vice, the vice principal or president, whatever the fuck you call her, literally told me, she was like, hey, Jair, like, I know that that was ridiculous, what he done, and he acted out of, you know what I'm saying? Like, he acted out of his place, basically, is what she was telling me. And she was like, you know what? I will pardon you, and he even said that he'll let me join back on the team. But guess what? I was too fucking prideful. I was too fucking caught up in, oh, I don't need this nigga, bruh. I can get a scholarship somewhere else. 
even though that coronavirus happened, I still could have at least ran in one track meet. But guess what? I fucked that up for myself, bro. And I'm never going to forget that. Because at the end of the day, I let another fucking hater get in my fucking head again. How many times are you going to hit your head in life until you fucking realize you need to change, bro? You need to fucking change. You're the fucking problem. Not everybody else. It's not always everybody else. A lot of the times it is, but you still have to look at your fucking self. You're not fucking perfect and you never will be. Take fucking accountability. I should have never let him get into my fucking head. Yeah, Coach Kyle, you're a fucking pussy ass bitch. But at the end of the day, bro, it is what it is. The devil still used him and the devil still beat me. But guess what? He ain't going to beat me no more. Because guess what? I already know people like that are going to be in my future. And guess what? I'm ready for it. Because if I ain't the greatest bitch, I'm headed for it. Believe me. Peace.